a person was troubled for a long time. Due to this, he started living very irritable and tense. He was upset that he had to bear all the household expenses. The responsibility of the whole family rests on him. One or the other relative keeps visiting his place. Thinking about these things, he used to be very upset. Due to this mental tension, he often scolds the children. He used to quarrel mostly with his wife on some or the other issue. One day, his son came to him and said, Father, get my school homework done. The person was already under stress, so he scolded his son and sent him away. But when, after a while, his anger subsided, he went to his son. He saw that the son was sleeping and he had his homework copy in his hand. He looked at the copy, and as soon as he put the copy down, his eyes fell on the title of the homework. The title of the homework was, which we don't like earlier, but later, it turns out to be good. Out of curiosity, he started reading the child's writing. The child wrote, I am very thankful to my final exam because it doesn't look good at first, but after that, there are school holidays. I thank you very much for the bitter medicines that taste bad because, in the beginning, it seems very bitter to me, but later, it cures me of the disease. I thank that alarm clock for waking me up in the morning. That tells me every morning that I'm alive. I also thank God who gave me such a good father because initially, I feel bad for his scolding, but he brings toys for me, takes me for walks, and feeds me nice things. And I'm glad I have a father because my friend Sohan doesn't have a father. After reading the child's homework, the person woke up suddenly. His mind changed. The words written by the child kept going over and over in his mind, especially his last line, which made him sleepless. Then the person sat quietly, and he started writing about troubles. I have to take care of all the household expenses. It means I have a house. And by the grace of God, I am in a better position than those who do not have a home. I have to bear the responsibility of the whole family. That means I have a family, a wife, and children. And by the grace of God, I'm more fortunate than those who do not have a family and are all alone in the world. One or the other friend or relative keeps coming to my place. It means I have a social status, and I have people to share my joys and sorrows. As soon as all these thoughts came, he folded his hands. He looked at the sky and said, O oh God! Thank you so much. I'm sorry I didn't recognize your grace. After that, his mind changed completely. All his troubles and worries are gone, as if he felt a strange peace inside him. He ran to his son and took the sleeping son in his arms and kissed his forehead, and began to thank his son and God. Whatever problems in our life, as long as we keep looking at them with negative eyes, until then, we'll be in trouble. And as soon as we start looking at those things in a positive attitude, our minds will change completely. All our worries, all our troubles, all our tensions will end immediately. And we'll start seeing new ways out of trouble. What beautiful words someone has said. There are always flowers for them who want to see flowers. Story 2 One of the dialogues of Mahabharat, the soul of the biggest donor Karna asked Lord Krishna, my mother abandoned me at birth. Was it my sin that I was born as an illegitimate child? Dronacharya refused to teach me because he didn't consider me a kshatriya. Was it my fault? Parshuram taught me and also gave me the curse that I will forget my education because he considered me a kshatriya. By mistake, a cow came in the way of my arrow and died, and I got the curse of the village ward. I was humiliated at Draupadi's Swayamvara because I was not treated as a member of any royal family. Even my mother Kunti herself accepted the fact that I am a son to protect her other sons. Whatever I got was due to the mercy of Duryodhana. So is it wrong that I owe my loyalty to Duryodhana? Shri Krishna spoke with a soft smile. Karna, I was born in jail. Before I was born, my death was waiting for me as Uncle Kansa. I was separated from my parents the night I was born. Your childhood was spent in the shadow of chariots neighing of horses and bow and arrow. I fed cows in my childhood and picked up the dung. When I couldn't even walk, I had fatal attacks somewhere. No army, no education, no gurukul, and no palace. 
My maternal uncle considered me the biggest enemy. When all of you used to get praise from your teacher and society for your bravery, I didn't even have an education at that time. After a long time, I got the opportunity to visit Sage Sandipani's ashram. At least you got a chance to marry the girl of your choice. I didn't get that either. Radha, who used to live in my soul, I had to give it up. I had to do many marriages for those political reasons or with the women whom I freed from the demons. Because of Jarasan's terror, I had to move my family from the Yamuna to a remote province and had to settle them by the sea. The world called me a coward, a cheater. If Duryodhan had won, you would have also got the credit for the victory. But Arjuna got the credit for winning the war of Dharmaraja. Kauravas considered me responsible for their defeat. Hey Karna, no one's life is free from challenges. Not everything goes well in everyone's life. The only problem is that everyone thinks their problem is the biggest. What is true, what is fair. This we determine by the voice of our soul. It doesn't matter how often are we treated unfairly. It doesn't matter how many times we are insulted. It doesn't matter how often our rights are violated. But the only difference is how we deal with them all. People who think positive even in adverse circumstances, many problems in their life are reduced. In such a situation, our negative thoughts can make our work worse. For this, we should always think positive. Story 3. There is a folk tale in this regard. According to a folk tale, two sages used to live together in a small cottage in a village. Both go to different villages early in the morning to beg for alms and then return to the hut. And then, chanting the name of Hanuman throughout the day, his life was going on by begging. One day, both of them went out to beg in different villages. Both came back in the evening. So they came to know that there was a storm in the village. When the first saint reached his hut, he saw that the hut was broken in half because of the storm. He got angry and started cursing God. The saint thought, I chant the name of the Lord daily, worship in the temple. In another village, the houses of thieves and robbers are safe and our hut broke. We worship all day long, but God doesn't care about us. How cruel is this God? He gives sorrow to devotees like us, and happiness to the bad. After some time, another saint also reached there. He also saw the broken hut. He was very happy to see it, and kept his head on the ground and started thanking God. The saint said, O oh God, today I believed that you really love us. Our devotion and worship did not go in vain. You saved half of our hut even in such a fierce storm. We can rest in your cottage. From today, my faith has increased more. This is the lesson of this story, that we should look at every situation with a positive attitude. Negative thoughts increase mental stress, and we can't even see the good things. And also, to show the power of positive thinking, listen to one more story. A rich merchant lived in a city. One day he went on a business trip. There was a dense forest on the way which he had to cross to reach his destination, but he was too tired to walk. So he sat down under a tree to rest. He felt thirsty while resting, but he didn't carry water. He started thinking that he had some water so that he could quench his thirst. A miracle happened as soon as he thought so, and a pitcher full of water appeared before him. He was satisfied by quenching his thirst with water. After a while he got hungry, but he had no food. He said to himself, How good it would be if I could get delicious food in a plate. My hunger will be over. A miracle happened again with him while speaking, and a plate full of different delicacies appeared before him. He ate his fill after which he fell asleep. He talked to his mind, How will I sleep on this stony ground? I wish there was a softer bed. In the blink of an eye, a comfortable bed appeared before him. He lay on that bed. He felt as if he was in heaven where all his wishes are being fulfilled one after the other. He was unaware that the tree under which he was lying was not an ordinary tree, but it is a fantasy tree, one that has the power to fulfill all desires. Lying on the bed, suddenly a thought came to his mind. This forest will be full of many types of wild animals who can be there at any moment. In such a situation, he will not even be able to protect himself. As soon as the thought came to his mind, out of nowhere, a ferocious lion came there. He was completely horrified to see the lion in front of him, and he couldn't even escape. 
the lion attacked him and killed and ate him. Thus, a negative thought took his life. That's why it is said that man is moved by his thoughts. Positive thoughts always lead to positive results. That's why always keep positive thinking. Gautam Buddha has said that all the power in the universe is already ours. We are the ones who cover our eyes and then weep at how much darkness is. And as for happiness, it's not a ready-made thing. Rather, it comes from our own actions. Friends, what have you learned from these four stories? Do tell by writing in the comment section and to give a positive approach to your mindset. Thank you for joining me on this journey of embracing simplicity and finding the true essence of life. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more thought-provoking content and please share to one person you love the most in last. I just want you to say, climb higher, aim higher, with a rise aspire.